The tour of Petra begins as you enter the desert, Wadi Araba, which translates to the Arab Desert. This is in the southern region of the Kingdom of Jordan, a land that is rich in both culture and history. The modern town of Petra has a population of approximately 30,000 people, but in ancient times has housed a lot more. Immediately as you enter the historic site of Petra, you feel as though you're brought back in time as carved facades covering caves open before you that combine styles from Greek, Roman, and Egyptian heritage carved by the Nabataeans around the first century. The path you follow quickly brings you into a structure called the Seek, a canyon eroded by water over millennia that has a long, narrow passageway, sometimes over 60 to 80 feet tall. The walls on either side of the canyon seem staggeringly high, and as you move through the structure, you see all sorts of carvings and culture as you walk along the narrow path. Shrines, sculptures carved out of the rocks, caves that used to be homes for travelers, and different depictions of animals and people fill the Seek as you move towards the larger structures beyond. At the end of the Seek, you catch your first glimpse of the al Kazma, the treasure, the most beautiful and popular structure of all of Petra. A breathtaking first view of one of the wonders of the world. This facade we started calling the treasury almost 200 years ago when Bedouins believed that there is a big treasure hidden inside this earth. So they were shooting it, expecting the treasure will fall down. Nothing fell down but the rock itself. Since the time they started calling it the treasure. And the fact is this is not used to keep any treasures, but it's a temple to prepare the bodies of dead people before burying them. There are two tombs of two important kings. Maybe a king and his wife. Actually, those two tombs we found almost 11 years ago. Finding them proves us something really important, which is this is not the real height of the ground. It could be at least seven meters low. So the architectures go all the way up to the top. From the top, they hang big scaffoldings. These are the marks or the signs where the scaffoldings were fixed. Then they stand on and they start carving, but from the top to the bottom. Why, if something falls down, nothing will, will be destroyed? You know, there are different theories about how much time it took. Some people say 40 years, and that makes sense. Actually, they made it between the first century BC and the first century. After some time at the treasury, you realize that it is only the first of the large structures that the site of Petra has to offer, and the local Bedouins offer guided tours on mules throughout the rest of the site. The full city of Petra is massive, including ruins from old Roman times, carved facades out of the caves, and even old Nabataean structures up on the mountains. To make seeing the whole site easier, we hired one of the local Bedouins named Muhammad Ali to take us up the mountains on the mules. The views as you move up the mountain quickly become spectacular as the full sight of Petra opens up before you. The rock itself is quite unique, showing signs of ancient tooling, and prehistoric sedimentary layers create ripples and lines in the rock found nowhere else on Earth. Within the rock, you also see signs of old fossils and history dating long back before the people lived in this area. You quickly lose count of the hundreds of caves and carved structures of the site of Petra as you move up the mountain and the full scale of the site really becomes apparent. It is difficult to appreciate the size from below, but from above you can even see things like this amphitheater and a small speck of a person by the entrance. As we approached the peak to a place called the High Place of Sacrifice, we left the mules and took the rest of the way on foot, walking on stairs that were carved thousands of years ago. The High Place of Sacrifice is a spiritual place overlooking the entire valley below. And from here, some of the most stunning sights of the entire area can be seen, including the royal tombs. But this area is called the High Place of Sacrifice for a reason. This is where Nabataean priests made sacrifices to their gods of both blood and fire. And on the site, there are two altars, one being the blood altar, the other being the fire altar. The priests would wash their sacrifice in the rain basin before bringing it to the blood altar, and there, blood was drained down the side of the mountain over a carving of a lion filling its mouth, completing the ritual. After the high place of sacrifice, we continued on to the Roman soldier tomb, an area where distinguished soldiers had once lived during the Roman occupation of the area in the 1st, 2nd, and 3rd centuries. With the site full of such spectacular wonders, it's hard to think of what could top what you've already seen, but the most spectacular site was yet to come. 
We add Deer, the monastery, the largest structure of Petra, almost 50 meters high and 50 meters wide. This monumental structure was also carved during the first century by the Nabataeans. The size of it is difficult to appreciate, and even the front door towers 30 feet above the ground, and even the small lip at the bottom of the door is roughly shoulder height to a six-foot person. Just such an enormous structure and absolutely breathtaking. And as the day winds down, we spent the remainder climbing down the mountain and enjoying the last of the views of the day. Our guide Muhammad talked to us about the Bedouin culture and the hospitality of those that live in the area. He even ended our tour with a traditional Bedouin song, for which we were very grateful. <laughs> If you get closer here, you see in the sandals, there are some Greek Nautian inscriptions mentioned that it is made in China. Okay. <laughs>